Alrighty, we made it to the first day of spring. Apparently, starts today. Feels early, but we had the leap year, leap day. Um, so that's what they said on the radio, at least. So, might be the first day of spring, um, and we're gonna get snow for it. So that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but at least we had a good spring recess, right, a couple weeks ago. So we're going to do midterm review today and our project, Checkers project. Hopefully, I saw a bunch of those coming in last night uh, before I went to bed. Hopefully it went okay. Um, it's just our practice here with recursion, and we'll talk about the last project. So we'll do Checkers project, the next project, and the long answer midterm review questions. That sound good? All right, let me fire up Visual Studio here. <clears throat> and again, sorry, I'm on Dayquil right now, so uh, don't get too close. Let's go back to C++. Let's be Project 2 checkers. I did hit the right, okay, you can see my screen, good. I've done that before. All right couple things for our checkers solver. I want the solution explorer, not, not the server explorer. Where? No? Okay, sure. We want a constructor that takes the 2D array or vector and validates it. We want to make sure we get a valid checkers board. Again, I don't know if they're all in black squares or all in white squares. I don't care which one is which. They just all need to be on the same type of square. Right, so if we're going to make some sort of checkered solver, we can add a, a class file here. So this will be our header file for checkered solver. Class for checkered solver. Our private section, our public section. Now, probably going to have our vector. Right, so we need to include vector. And I like vectors more than I like arrays. Either one would be perfectly fine, whatever you prefer here. It's not going to make any difference. Um, User namespace. Wow, this is going to be rough today. So a vector of vector of char. Right, it's probably the easiest to make this thing a board. And then we've gone through a couple of these before um, with some of the different exercises where we set these up. All right. Then our constructor then, our checkers solver constructor, should take a vector of vector of char to the board, and this might be a reference, might not be a reference, however you want to do it here is, is fine. These are not super big, so it doesn't really matter one way or the other um, for our purposes if we're making, taking the reference or not, uh, we should be okay. So we'll set our board to the board, and then we want to validate it, right? Or I guess before, I, there's not a whole lot we can do right now, we haven't got to the exceptions piece yet, right? You told me? We did exceptions? We didn't do exceptions. Okay, we didn't get to them yet, so just making sure it looks good. So I can say for uh, maybe row index, or you could say for each row. Right? Now, to see if they're all in the same color, the colors alternate, right? If you, if you look at our chessboard image here, the rows alternate. There we go. That's diagonal. It'll be nice and easy for us to make sense of this. Might have been a bad picture, but that's okay. So the first square is a black square, and then the first square is a white square, and the first square is a black square. So every other row starts with the other color. So I can't just say, hey, is every piece on like an odd index here? It's going to cause a little bit of trouble here. Um, so like rows and columns and rows and columns. We, we got a couple ways we can go about it here. Um, but I like row index. So we'll start with row index. So we'll say row index is less than eight row index plus plus and maybe a couple sanity check things too right it should also be size eight right um right? If, if it's not size eight then bad things should happen here i don't know so if the board dot size does not equal eight and again this this feels real bad here um just see outing things Invalid size or something like that. Sure. Um, we really didn't. He didn't get to exceptions yet. We'll get to them. So th this is bad here. It's bad. It's validate. Please use exceptions. 
just a, a note, um, just no one's guaranteed to actually look at this or care or do anything about this here. So an exception that will make the program crash is the right way to do this because they either have to fix it or crash and then make their users feel bad. So we'll get back to that. That's okay. Um, all right, so then for every row, we want to loop through and find every column then. So for int column index, index 0, column index is less than 8, column index plus plus. And then we could check, you know, every single row, I guess, the length here. Might as well. Um, oops, that was it. Not the right one. So if my board dot at the row index dot size does not equal eight. Invalid width, maybe? I don't know. Some message here. Invalid number of rows. I don't know. You can come up with something here. I, I know I, if you checked eight by eight, great. If you didn't check eight by eight, that's okay. Um, pro I probably was just expecting you to check the checkers here, but while we're here and checking things. So now we need to see the colored space that the first piece is on, right? So we need to see and determine which is the first piece that we find. Because there might only be one piece on the board. There might be two pieces on the board. There might be 32 pieces on the board. I don't know how you set it up. I should be able to take any kind of board here. So how about we, do you want to assume that the pieces are on the white squares or on the, on the black squares? Either one should be fine. But we make a little boolean for, you know, um, our pieces. Pieces are on white squares. How about true just for now? Because we don't actually know. Is that, is that okay? All right. So we'll assume they're on white squares until we find otherwise. Is that probably okay? Or do you need to find the first one? Um, Hmm. How about how about we set? Let's do this. Um, so let's set them both. To, let's make two different values. We can say we found pieces on white squares and we found pieces on black squares. We'll set them both to false. And then at the end of all eight rows and all eight columns, if they're both true, because we found a piece on a white square, we found a piece on a black square, we know we're in bad shape. Does that seem? Seem reasonable? You know, there's tons of different ways to go about solving this. Um, I'm just coming up with something right now with my um, cold medicine brain. So pieces are on black squares equals false. So when we get to the end, if they're both true, this is no good. right? If one of them is true, that's good. And if none of them are true, I guess it's technically valid to have no, probably not valid, right? To have no checkers, there should be at least one checker. You can't finish a game of checkers without one checker on the board, I suppose. Could you possibly do it based on uh, the index times the column? Because it, it looks like if you multiply the, say we start at one, that very first black square at the left. We find out one that's up and, like, up and down here. Um, here. What? It, sure. Just find me a checkers board. Okay. So the very, I guess this one. Uh, so the very first white square here is uh, one one. So be zero zero. Uh, or it would be or one one. Uh, okay. But uh, I guess yeah. So we'd have to adjust it plus one. But you could. Uh, it'd be one one. But then the black square is uh, one two. If you multiply those together, you'd get one times one or two times one. So you'd end up with an even okay. result. So you could maybe I don't know. Odds uh, and evens. Yeah, I didn't think to. Uh, uh, check to make sure that they were on the alternating spots. I wrote mine to check to make sure I only used uh, capital B for a black piece, capital W for a white piece, and then uh, a blank space for something oh, okay. that doesn't have a piece. Okay, make sure that you had the yeah. characters you're expecting. Okay. Um, yeah, there's, there's, I'm sure there's some kind of arithmetic <laughs> for if I add them or multiply them or, or do something here, something clever, I'm sure we can come up with. But um, yeah, I think just adding. So this is so. Um, let me draw a picture here, right? I'm gonna make life easier if we draw a picture. Come on. Didn't I get my screen? 
Snip, snipping tool. Come on, do snip. There it goes. Okay, I don't know if I had to open that. All right, so if this is zero zero, this is zero one, zero two, zero three, zero four. That's a four there. Sorry, zero five, zero six. And zero seven. If we add those together, right, we get zero one two. That that one's pretty easy to add, right? And then one zero, and one one, and one two, and one three, and one four, and one five, one six, and one seven. If we add these ones together, right, we get one two three four five six seven eight. So do you notice anything about odds and even numbers here? I think this is what you're getting at, right? With multiplying? Even or multiplying or adding when you get uh, even numbers in the white spaces and then odd numbers on the black spaces. I think that pattern will hold out, right? Yeah. So we can if we add our indexes together, even is white, odd is black. Right? Does that that one make sense to everybody? Okay, it's just one approach, right? One way of doing it here. So we can say, hey, if my board dot at the row index dot at the column index, no column column index does not equal a space, right? Or a space character, right? So if I don't find a space, right? It could be any kind of checker. It could be a black checker. It could be a white checker. That's fine here. Either one is okay. But now I'm going to say, okay, if it was, if I add the indexes together and they're even, I'm on white. If I add the indexes together and they're odd, I'm on a black space. So we can say, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, now we could do another if or else here if you wanted. Uh, I suppose that would work here. Right, so if my row index plus the column index modulus two equals zero. And again, order of operations never hurts here. If that equals zero, then it must be on an even a white space. Right? So pieces are on white space, on white squares would be true. And if it's not that, then my pieces on black squares is true. Right? Okay, and then we'll just check every single space. Eventually we're done with all of those, and then if pieces are on black squares and pieces are on white squares. Then we can see out you can't pieces on both colored squares or something. And then line, I don't know, some sort of error message, something like that, right? So it's just some little validation here, right, for our board. Does that one make sense? Okay. Um, and then it might be nice to have Spaces, so we're not using spaces in black and white. Um, so in our checker solver, we could have some sort of public values, um, so like a static char weight it's w, and a static char black equals b. Oh, hang on. Um, There we go. And you could even do space if you want to do space, but black and white is probably fine. Or um, I don't know. I feel a little bad having that one here, but it's probably okay. I think I used an underline just so that oh, okay. when it prints the board later, it's not like nice. Yeah, like so you can see it. And then, uh, I think we had an example of printing a board out here, right? Um, I was in one of these labs, right? I think we did it this one here, yeah, to print our board. So I'm just gonna steal this one here. Um, so we can do print board. So I don't need the board passed in here because I already have a board, right, in this class, if I wanted to add it here for my checkers board. Um, this is just for my own purposes to make life a little bit easier here. And I will cite my source, right? Because why not? We can do that. Um, all right, so we got our board. So I think that was the first piece for checkers, right? Got the, the 2D array or 2D vector and validates it. Great, now we want to find the longest jump for a single white checker and the longest jump for all white checkers. 
All right, so then the next piece then we want is we're probably going to have a private int, uh, sorry, an int for longest number of jumps. And then that's probably, we should start off at zero till we know otherwise, right? And then at some point we should be able to solve this thing. Whether or not you want to call that from the constructor or not, it's up to you. Um, uh, so then like, uh, int get longest number of jumps. Did I, did I specify a name of a function here? I don't remember if I did or not. Get max jumps. Get max jumps. There we go. Sorry. Get max jumps. Thank you. Get max jumps. Okay. Should that just be max jumps then? Max jumps. Sure. What that max jumps then? All right. So for getting the max jumps, this one needs to go through and essentially find every white checker, and for every white checker, find its number of max jumps and see which one is the longest of those. Right. So we got a, got a couple options. Um, now this get max jumps isn't taking any arguments here. So is this going to be the one that we're going to call recursively? No, probably not, right? Because we're not giving enough information here. So what would be better then is to probably have some private function, right? Uh, so for, I don't know, this is probably void is fine here. This will be calculate jumps or something. And this needs a row index and a column index. Right? Probably do it this way. Do you also have to pass it the board? So because we have a board variable, we'll have access to that board here because we're using a class. So if you did without a class, you could just pass the board everywhere. I like the idea of this being a class here. It makes life a little easier for us. We don't have to pass the board everywhere. Um, now, to calculate the number of jumps, we probably need to know how many jumps we currently have. Right? Not just the max number of jumps. So I'm going to have one more current jumps here. And then current jumps will start off at zero as well. Okay. So all get max jumps is going to do then is find every white checker and trigger my calculate jumps. Calculate jumps will do the recursive piece for me. So this one will find every white checker. So for, and now this one I can do a vector of char for the row in the board. And then, oh, no, I, I can't do that. Shoot, I need the indexes. All right, I'll just steal this loop then. I forgot, I need the indexes here. And then if my or dot at the row index, at the column index, I want to just keep doing all this here. Um, am I missing a curly brace? I'm missing a curly brace. There's that one. So I need a closing one and another closing one. So if this one is equal to a white checker. Okay. So go for every row, go for every column. If you find a white checker, now we're going to do the recursive calculate jumps. Right? So we're going to call calculate jumps given the row index and the column index. That's all this one needs to do. So we're just going to find every white checker and start this process. Right? This way, if I've got 10 white checkers, I'll have tried to calculate jumps 10 times right, for that row and that column. In calculate checkers, now this is the one that needs to do the recursive piece. Right? So the, the idea of what we're going to do is we're going to just try and jump. Right? And then if we can jump, really, so maybe try and can we jump? Can we jump? And then do the jump, which is, you know, that in itself is broken up into a couple steps, right? That's count the jump. Move the white checker, remove black checker, and recurse. Recurse. Right? And then we're going to check which direction can we jump every single time. Right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So, a lot of ways about going about this. Now, probably a private helper function would be nice. Let's write some code first, and then we can turn it into a helper function if we want. So can we jump? Which direction do we want to try and go first? Um, in the, in the recursion lab, you did the maze checker, which also checks directions. Yep. That's a good base, but then you have mm -hmm. to change it instead of up, down, left, right. 
upright. Yeah, because we jump diagonals and checkers yeah. instead of just up, down, left, right, like our maze solver. Yeah, which, which you want to go up left, you want to go up right, you want to go down left, you want to go down right. Up left, okay. So we'll go up left, and then which direction? Up right, and then down right, and then down left, okay. So to go up left, so can we jump? So a couple things have to be true here, right? The destination has to be in bounds, right? I can't go less than zero for an index. And if I'm going up left, I'm going minus two rows, minus two columns, right? So if my row index minus two is less than zero, or it has to be the, what, greater than or equal to zero, this is valid, right? And my column index minus two is greater than or equal to zero. That one is also valid, right? So it's in bounds. Once I know it's in bounds, then I need to check to see if it's blank, right? So and my or dot at the row index minus two dot at the column index minus two is equal to blank, right? I know there's a blank place I can land, right? And then this, there needs to be a black checker for me to jump over, right? So that minus one, minus one is a black checker. If it's inbounds and there's open space and there's a black checker to jump, then I can jump, right? So this is the piece we're going to want to redo, right, and turn into a function somewhere because this is a, a bit of a hassle to have to write every time. It's not the end of the world, but it's a, a small hassle here to write every time, right? So if it is, right, then we will do our jump. We're going to count the jump, move the white checker, move the black checker, recurse. And then after we're done recursing here, right, so one, oh uh, goodness, I hit insert, I hit insert. I don't even know where the insert key is on my keyboard. I don't have one. There it is, I do. I do have an insert key. It's over the number pad, that's a weird spot. Um, we have to undo, right? Once we come back, we're gonna undo that, pretend like it didn't happen, okay? Now that's kind of important. That, that's the piece that puts the board back to the way it was before, okay? All right. So if we can jump, we're gonna jump. So we'll take our current number of jumps, Plus plus, we did a jump, right? Count it, sure. Then move the white checker. So my board, <clears throat> excuse me, my board at this location will equal a white checker. My board at where I currently am will equal a blank. And then the board here will also equal a blank, right? Take the black checker off. So move the white checker, re remove the white checker, maybe let's do it in an order, I guess, here. That'll make me happier. Move the white checker, jump over the black checker, move the white checker to its new location, and then recurse. And we call calculate jumps at the row index minus two, at the column index minus two. When we're done, Right? When this function's done, undo all of those things. Right? Just do it in reverse. And I like doing it in actually reverse order. Just it makes me happy. Does not matter one little bit here, but I, it makes it's a little bit more symmetrical, and that makes me happy. That's all. Right? So put that one back to blank. Right where we did land should be blank. We should put our black checker back, and put the white checker back. Uncount the jump. Right? So make the changes, recurse. When this is done, as soon as we've found as far as we've gotten here, we reach our base case of there's nothing left to do, undo it to put the board back to the way it was before so now I can try jumping the other direction. Right? And now this we're going to have a bunch of different times as well. Right? This is going to be a little bit ugly here. Um, now, at some point we want to check to see if we've gone the furthest possible. So I think probably easiest to do that at the top here. We can say, hey, if my current jumps is greater than my max jumps, my max jumps should equal the current jumps, right? Because I counted the jump. Okay, there is a jump to do. Let's jump it. 
and recurse. So then the first thing it's going to do is, okay, now I've gone one jump. Is that more than zero? Yes, it is. Great. Now let's see, can I keep jumping? Right? So this way I'll, I'll be able to track the max number of jumps eventually here. Right? And then this one, get max jumps. Once that's all done, I can return max jumps. Right? I've tried every single white square. Eventually I can return that max jumps here. All right. So this code here, we want to refactor and clean up because I don't want to have to type this or copy paste it all a bunch of times, right? And the only thing that's different is plus one, minus one, plus one, minus two, like all those values here, right? Okay, so I think what we can do is I can take all of this here then and I think, can I extract it? Let me see, did it give me an option? It did give me an option, but there we go, extract function. Let's, uh, I don't know, can try jump maybe? But I need also the minus, so these ones need to change as well. So it's not the only thing here. That's okay. So this will be the current, maybe? We rename this one. So let's rename, this is the current row index. Current row index. Okay, and then this one will be the current column index. Okay, and then what do we need here? Do we want to pass the destination or we want to pass the plus one, plus two, minus two, minus two? I think it's probably easier to pass the minus, minus two, minus two, whatever. Right? But otherwise, you have to do some arithmetic. So to calculate the middle where the black square is, it's just half of whatever this one is. Right, so this would be my um, int for a row change and an int for a column change. So I can give it like neg negative two for row change, negative two for column change. Right, so this will be my row change. And really, I want to be adding these things here. So I can give it a negative number if I want to subtract, right? And then I want to add my column change. Now, if I'm going to do this everywhere, I want to make sure that these are also valid within range the other direction. Right, because I don't know if I'm going to be increasing or decreasing here. So I want to make sure that um, I'm also going to check. Oh, I already have the end here. So my current row index plus the row change is less than my board.size. Right? And my current column index plus the current the column change is less than board.size. Now this is assuming it's an 8x8 square, but I think that's probably fair, because otherwise the whole thing screws up anyway, if it's not really a checkers board. Right, so just adding in, make sure we don't go less than zero, make sure we don't go more than seven, because we got indexes zero to seven, right? And then all of this then is gonna be plus my row change. Um, and then this will be plus the row change divided by two, right? So if I give it negative two or plus two, right? Half of that would be that one. So and this is plus my column change, I promise this is easier than doing the other one. Divided by two. Now, with order of operations, we get the divided by two first. If you want to throw in some more parentheses, doesn't hurt at all, right? We can be ex as explicit as we want with these things here. Okay? And this is um, plus my row change divided by two. This is plus my row change. This is plus the column change divided by two. This is plus the column change plus the column change, plus the column change, plus the column change divided by two, and this is plus the row change, plus the row change, plus the row change divided by two. Right, I think we got them all here. So, okay, now that the color fixed here, right? So then try jump then to go up left then is minus two, minus two. Up right, then. So going to the right is plus columns. Still minus rows, but plus columns. Going down right is plus two, plus two. Going down left is plus two rows, minus two columns. Right? And then all of that other stuff happens here. So by turning that into a function, make this a little bit cleaner here. Again, not required. 
Uh, but this way I didn't have to copy paste the same logic four times to feel bad about myself. Right? If the only thing that's different is some values here, we can just pass the values. Okay? And hopefully we did that right. We'll see. We'll see if it works. Um, so this should just keep on recursing and trying and recursing and trying and recursing and trying, right? As far down as many jumps as we can go. I think that's actually it now. I think that gives me single checker and all checkers because we did the loop for all checkers already. Should we try it? Let's set up a board here. Let's go, I think I had a board over here in a main function. Um, so we want to include our checker solver. We'll make a board, right? What do we say? Um, I think we had a couple different examples here. So if we had a black checker here, and a black checker here, and a white checker here, and what do we say? Like a white checker was it here? I think we jump up to there, and then one more. Um, there, right? I should be able to get. One jump, two jumps, three jumps, four jumps with this checker, right? And this one should be able to go one, two, or one, two with this white checker. So it should be four, right? But there's a couple different paths we could take. I think we can come up with lots of different boards here. So we'll try our checker solver, um, checker solver, solver, given the board, solver, solver. In the board, and then I can see out my solver docket max jumps. Right, this should be four. Again, I didn't ask for unit tests, but hopefully you're doing some sort of testing here. We got a four. It's a good sign. Right, so we got calculated for more than one checker. Um, let's see. So if we put another one down like here, right, it should still be four. Right. And then you just try some different scenarios. Still four. Make sure you don't go off the edge of the board or anything like that, right? So if we put another black checker here, you shouldn't be able to jump off the board, right? Probably a good thing. Still get four. Life is good. That was the error I was getting. I forgot to make it not go off the board. Yeah. And so every time I did it, it said like out of range. And until you did it right now or earlier when you were writing that, I was like, I don't know why this. The logic is sound. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't it work? Oh. Yeah. For index out of bounds errors are, are obnoxious. Yep. Yeah. I tried looking it up too, and because nobody was making the same checkers yep. for it, all of their out of bounds thing, someone would just rewrite the code for them. So I was like, it doesn't <laughs> answer why this is happening. You just did it for them. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, doing the bounds checking is, is useful. Um, make sure we don't run into lots of errors. So, all right, questions about checkers? And this is just a one example of backtracking recursion. Not the best way to solve problems, but this is relatively intuitive, trying to solve this without recursion is going to be a hassle. There's ways to do it. Um, and like if you looked up maze solvers, there's ways that you can s s track all of your paths without recursion. Usually it uses a queue and all sorts of fun things. And I can tell you didn't write the code yourself because it doesn't look like code we would write because it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's more efficient than backtracking recursion if you can use queues and, and manage stuff that way. It's harder for us to conceptualize and think about and solve, right? Um, I, I think that's sort of the idea with that. Um, so we need recursion when we start getting into some of these interesting data structures. We will use recursive functions when we talk about them. So when we look at what's coming up next here, <clears throat> Ooh, the VIX vapor rub and the DayQuil really makes that stuff move. It's good, good combo. Um, Oh, we don't get into too much. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, when you in 350, when you get into trees, tree structures are very recursive in nature. That's right. That's where we're setting the stage. Go a little deeper with recursion than we did in 150, hopefully, and you'll use it even more um, continuing on. So, all right, that sound okay? All right, should we talk about the next project? Let me fire up my next link here real quick. Uh, here it is. So for project three, that's 200, 24. Project three. C plus plus. 
Now, if you'd like to work with a partner on this one to see whether or not they'll be a good partner for the final project, this is a nice little trial run, a little bit lower stakes here. Um, and it, um, I'm, I'm up to that. All I need is your GitHub usernames. I, I need you to accept the assignment, and I need your GitHub usernames uh, so I can give your partner access to your repository. It's generally how I, I go and do that. So then they'll be able to make commits and pull their changes down, and pull changes down and write um, to your, that repository. Um, you both don't want to change the file at the same time. Git will get, <laughs> Git will get confused. <laughs> Makes me laugh every time. I'm sorry. I'm just a big nerd. Um, once you have a commit, we can always get back to that commit, but if you both change this, the same file at the same time, it's hard to get your commit out to the cloud that central repository because it gets confused. It's like, I don't know which version I want because your partner had this one and then you made some changes to a different version. So there's a little bit of extra work that's involved. Um, there, there's a whole workflow you can go through. We don't have time to get into that workflow, unfortunately. Um, but just do a little bit of coordination and life should be pretty good. Um, all right, so this is project three, stacks and queues. So let's do two weeks on this one. So this does put it out into April, which is a little sad because um, we're also going to have the final project coming up soon. I want to make sure we have enough time on the final project. Um, but again, this is not tons of work on this one here, and you've got a chance to work with a partner. Um, so hopefully it goes pretty quick here. Um, then give me a second. I just got to go find it. Um, wow, my cert, really? Didn't find it? Okay, sure, it's probably here. Is it this one? No. This one? No. This one? No. I didn't use it here? Really? I'm confused. Give me a second, I'm sorry, that was checkers. Okay, uh, let, me go, let me go steal it here then. All right, stacks and queues. All right, and then start the repo, add your self-assessment. Okay, good, 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 good. This one's going to look a little crazy here, and that's okay. Um, I'll talk you through it. I promise it's not so bad. Let's just go add that rubric here, too. Um, so for project three, we're going to use. Why? I hate when it adds things to my copy paste. We're going to use classes. Have good object oriented design. Use classes here. The classes are good. Your train calculations work. New criteria. No, it's not linked to learning outcome. Stop that. I don't know why it does that. That's what I get for copy pasting. My apologies. All right, and one more here. Not a learning outcome. Okay. Use that for grading. So 20 points on this one. Worth more points than the other ones. I promise it's not so bad. It just takes a little bit of thinking through here. So. Um, big eye chart. The idea with this sort of problem, I, I shamelessly stole this one from Dr. Ella Mogan. These are modeled after the um, ICPC coding competition questions where they're like, here's some input, here's some expected output. And it's all uh, just, here's a bunch of lines of input you have to read, here's a bunch of lines of output. It's really interesting, all sorts of fun. Usually if you take 350, you're ready for it. We used to have teams that would go every year. It's been a little rough since COVID. I don't think we've sent the team since. Um, but you'd spend all weekend coding, solving silly puzzles, using data structures and algorithms. Um, and it was a good time because we're all a bunch of nerds hanging out. Um, but that being said, this was a similarly shaped problem here. Um, so we we're going to simulate using our stacks and queues um, how we would load airplanes and trains from containers that have been unloaded from a ship. Just setting the stage here, imagine this was this would make a little bit of sense here. So a ship comes in, has a bunch of containers on it, they get unloaded from the ship. One section for the planes, one section for the trains. Okay. Um, planes get put on an assembly line, a queue, if you will. Right. Each item is labeled with the train number or the plane number, which is the where that one's going. 
Items for trains are placed in stacks until they get five high, and then a new stack is began behind the original. Like OSHA rules, you can't stack these containers too high or they'll fall over and squish people. Squishing people is bad for profit, so companies don't want to do that. We can agree that that's, that's the incentive for not squishing people. It's bad for profits, right? Usually, okay, sorry. It, it's, it's early. We can't make capitalistic jokes. Okay. It's, it's, it's not dystopian at all. Not dystopian enough. <laughs> or enough. Okay. Um, so if we're making stacks, it's a stack, right? You can put something on top of the stack. You can take something off the top of the stack. You can't take the bottom container off the stack or you'll squish people, right? So it's a stack. We're using stacks and queues. And if we're putting stacks in a row here, right, um, then you, you behind the original one, you have a queue of stacks, right? So you have a queue. The first one is a stack of containers, and then the next one gets added, and the next one gets added. But when you're loading them, right, you're only getting off that front stack. Once that front stack is empty, then we can get to the next stack that's in front, right? That's a queue. So we're trying hard to use these structures. That's essentially it here. So we're assuming one poor person works all of the trains, and one poor person works all of the trains. Okay? And our job is to see how long it takes until each train is loaded and how long it takes until each plane is loaded. Because we want to optimize this, of course. We don't want to pay someone to sit around and do nothing. Because that's bad for profits, too. Okay? So the time that it takes to get to a train with your little hilo, right? You, you drive your hilo up, you grab the, the container that's on the top of the front stack, and you say, okay, what train number does this go to? It goes to train number seven. Okay? It will take seven times two to get there and back. So seven minutes to get there, seven minutes to get back. Okay? Assume as soon as you get there, it just falls off the high-low and you're super good at this thing and whatever. There's no, no time there. So just the round trip there and back. For planes, these are a little further. You have to drive the high-low all the way to the airport. So it's 10 minutes times the plane number to get there and back. So five minutes to get there, five minutes to get back for the plane. Okay. So how long does it take to load everything? So all of our inputs are in five lines. Now this will look nuts. It's okay. We'll talk through it. So the first line is number of trains. Then we get number of train planes. So trains, planes, number of items for trains, number of items for planes. So I have three trains and two planes. There are 10 items for trains and five items for planes. Sounds like a Dr. Seuss book. Okay. The next line will tell me how many items go on each train. So the first train gets two items, the next train gets seven items, the next train gets one item. Then the, how many items go on each plane? The first plane gets three items, the next plane gets two items. The next line says this is the order in which the train items were unloaded from the ship. Remember, these are going to go in stacks of five. So this one we want a picture of here. Let me grab my snipping tool again, because why not? Let's do a new snip. Okay. So, number two goes first. It's at the bottom of the stack. Then a number two again. So it's a container for that train. A number two again. And then a one. And then a three. This one is five high. OSHA says I can't stack them any higher. The next stack will go behind this one, right? Okay, so then I have a two behind that one, and then a two behind that one, and a two, and a one, and a two. All of my items for trains have been unloaded, right? This is the front of the queue here, right? So then to figure out how long it takes to load, so I have train one, I have train two, and I have train three, right? Train one is only gonna get two items. Train two is gonna get seven items. Train three gets one item. So we're assuming the unloading just happens. This is a different union has to unload the ships, right? The, the, we're the, the loader union here, so we're gonna do, once it's all been stacked in, in a queue, now I can start unloading. So my timer starts at zero, right? So I'm gonna drive my little high-low here. Um, right, here's my wheels, right? There's my little forklift. Here's me in the cab. I'm having a good time here. Apparently driving a high-low is really difficult um, because the wheel is like a circle that you spin. They don't give you a car wheel. I don't know why, but apparently circles are better for high-lows. 
I feel like they did that on purpose to make it hard to drive. So you have to learn how to, but that's a, a I'll take off my tinfoil hat. Um, anyway, so we're going to go up to the front of the queue, off the top of the stack, right? It's been zero minutes so far. We'll say, okay, where does this go? Which train number does this go to? Train number three, okay? So we go drive over to train number three, drop it off. It's a round trip, takes two minutes times the train number. So to get there, it's taken three minutes. This train has its one item, it is fully loaded, we're done. Boom, done. We come back and it's been six minutes. We go to train number one, it's been seven minutes. We come back and it's been eight minutes. Train number two, 10 minutes, we come back and it's been 12 minutes. Train number two, 14 minutes, come back, 16 minutes. Train number two, 18 minutes, come back, it's been 20 minutes. Train number two, 22 minutes, come back, it's been 24 minutes. Train number one, 25 minutes, it's fully loaded, 25. Come back, it's been 26 minutes. 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 36, fully loaded. We come back, it's been 38 minutes, but we only care about when the train was loaded. So in the output here, each train in order, how long did it take? Train one took 25 minutes, train two took 36, train three took three. That's how long it took to load the trains. Okay? Items for planes just go on a queue, just a conveyor belt and an assembly line, so they're just gonna go first in, first out here. Right? We can just work them right this direction. Or I can put them in a queue, if we could draw another picture, this should be fine. It takes 10 minutes times the plane number to get there. So I have plane one, and I have plane two. That's a P, not an R, sorry, and a two, right? So 10 minutes to get there and back, right, for times the plane number. So I have 10 and 20 for the first one, and then um, 25 and 30, 35 and 40, 50, and it's done. I come back and it's been 60, 65, that one's loaded. So 65 and 50, right? Looks like a bunch of nonsense with all the numbers, but that's what it is, okay? So any valid input here we need to handle. Now, there could be zero trains, or there could be zero planes. There'll not be more than 100 trains, there'll not be more than 10 planes. So if there's no planes, you're gonna have no items for planes. If there's no trains, you'll have no items for, for trains, right? So the line might be blank. That's all. Um, so we need to handle that. It's not the worst part in the world here, uh, but that, that's one sort of thing you probably want to test here as we go, right? Okay. Again, not the worst thing in the world. It's just a little bit of thinking through, getting through the process, loading it all up, setting it, conceptualizing it. Using classes here will help us organize, do our functional decomposition, take a big problem, break it down into smaller pieces, smaller pieces, smaller pieces, right? Solve the easy things that are easy to solve. If it's too complex, let's break it down, simplify it, okay? Now, you don't need 50 different classes to solve this, right? but you, you need more than one, right? It's probably the idea here, okay? Questions, thoughts? This is a little bit of nonsense, but just um, some explicit practice using a stack and a queue. Again, you don't have to use the ones we wrote. You're welcome to use the ones from the standard template library which is probably easier than using the ones we wrote anyway. Okay, make sense? All right, cool. Um, the last piece here then is our midterm practice. So I don't think there's, um, let's see, so we did our linked list lab last, yeah, we haven't done anything new. So for lab today, um, I'll just hang out. We can give you a chance to catch up on lab stuff. I don't have a new lab for you this week because we haven't done any new topics. Does that make sense? Um, so I feel like we've gotten into the bad habit that I said don't do where you're doing last week's lab during this week's time. Like everyone seems to be working on the previous week's lab. I get it. It's, I'm behind on everything myself too, so I, I can't really make fun of you for doing it um, when I'm doing it myself. But ideally we're, we're, up, we're up to date, right? Um, that sort of thing. So this will be a catch-up time for lab. All right. Um, so for the midterm then, I think I added the file, right? I, I just uploaded a PDF of it from last time. Yeah, practice midterm. So... Half quiz questions, right? One point each. I will take them right out of the quiz test banks here. I used to just tell you I'd be quiz style questions, pretend like I would rewrite them. I don't rewrite them. Uh, they're just quiz questions here. Um, but you get a point for agreeing. Do we talk about this already? 
how this this they studied this, and if you agree first, you're less likely to cheat. Okay, good. That's a really cool story. Um, human behavior, super fascinating, and I understand very little of it here. Uh, my wife was a, a psych major, um, so she loves that sort of stuff, but I don't know. Confuses me. Computers make a whole lot more sense than people, by the way. Right? They do what you tell them to do, and they're very predictable every time. Um, all right, so long answer questions then. One on recursion. Okay. So making you do something recursive here just for the sake of doing it rec with recursion. Okay? It doesn't, doesn't mean it's a good thing. Right? This would be easier to use a loop for instead of using recursion, right? But I'm going to ask you to use recursion to just practice some, you know. So if we're essentially doing a loop with recursion, I'm going to have probably a helper function, right, that has additional information. Like, what's my current sum and what's my current index? Okay, so um, we fire up a new project here. Do new project for midterm review. Oh, I should commit that to GitHub too, shouldn't I? Commits are free, right? 200. Um, here we go. Two. Ooh, the day is really kicking in. Um, yeah, midterm review. It's good not to have lab on, right? Using namespace, standard. Okay. So. Accepts the vector of integers, returns the sum of all values in even indexes minus the sum of all values in odd indexes. Sure. So uh, include vector. And then an int here was, you know, sum of evens indexes minus odds or something, given a vector of int numbers. And I don't really care about the, the name, but this is uh, hopefully describes what it's supposed to be doing here. Now, this one is the public function, right? I probably want to have that private helper function that is int some, uh, I don't know, sum of even indexes minus odds. It takes a vector of int for the numbers, and probably the reference here, right? We don't want to be passing this a bunch of different times. It's fine if we're doing a, a copy. Uh, efficiency was not one of the points here, uh, but it's better this way, right? Um, and then maybe an int for the current index and an int for the current sum, right? So then our base case, right, if our current index is greater than or equal to numbers.size, return the current sum, uh, current sum, we're done, right? When we reach the end, no more work to do. Otherwise, if my current index mod 2 is 0. If we're even, we're going to take current sum plus equals the numbers at the current index. If it's not even, then we'll subtract it, right? It must be odd. We'll subtract it. And then we'll recurse. We're going to return my sum of even numbers, given the numbers, given the current index plus 1, given the current sum. Okay, so then this one here, like the outer function, can just return the private one, sum of this, given numbers, given index zero, sum of zero. Eventually we'll get back the current sum, and it gets returned and returned and returned and returned and returned all the way on up, right? Because we're returning the result, returning the result, returning the result. This one makes sense, so we're just doing a loop with recursion. Right? This is the while condition, essentially, while this is not true, keep on going. Um, right? Okay. I think that made more sense in my head. We okay? All right. Um, something about two-dimensional vectors. Right? So this is returns true of the sum of each row by index matches the sum of each column by index. Okay? Uh, we, pro oh, we probably should have like actually tested this, right? I always make fun of you if you don't test your code, so we should test it. So vector of int for numbers. One, two, and three. So even indexes would be one and three. I'd expect four minus two should be two, right? Uh, sum of, right, should be two, I think. 
Let's see, do we get two? And we got two, okay, good. So if I throw another number in here, then like four, now I should be at negative two, right, because we're subtracting that four. Negative two, okay, and just one more just for fun here. And now adding five, I should be back at positive three, right? Positive three, okay, I think we're good here. All right, the next one, right, this two-dimensional vectors checks to see something. Uh, there's probably some math number here, but uh, that's a, a Boolean value, probably. Uh, I don't know what, do rows match, I don't know, row sums match column sums given a vector of vector of int. Uh, I don't know, some grid, how about a grid, sure. Right. So we're going to say the sum of the row doesn't match the sum of that column. Right. So we're going to need a loop. Right. So for, uh, or maybe um, maybe a while loop for this one. I don't know. So for int current index equals zero and while current index is less than grid.size. So I need to get the sum of the row, and then you get the sum of the column. So the int for the row sum is zero, int for the column sum equals zero, and then for, bless you, int row is equal to the current index, row index equals the current index, the row index is, hmm, Let's see, so hang on. So for the row sum, the row is fixed. I want to go for every column. So for int column index is zero, column index is less than grid.size, column index plus plus. We'll take my row sum plus equals the board dot at the current index dot at the, oh, I'm sorry, the grid, there we go, not the board, grid, at the column index. Right, so go for every column, add a fixed row, right? Then we want to get the for int row index, zero row index is less than grid.size, row index plus plus. I'll take my column sum plus equals the grid dot at the row index dot at the current index, right? Fixed column, different row. Probably could do this in the exact same loop, right? Can we do that? I feel like this is more clear, but we could do it in a single loop if we wanted, right? Now I'm feeling bad. That's okay. More code is just perfectly fine. And then once we're done with all of that, right, um, now we can check. So if my row sum does not equal the column sum, sum, I'm going to return false. Didn't match. If I go through every current index, right, current index now plus plus, and I haven't returned false, I can return true. They did match, right? So if I find one that doesn't match, return false. Otherwise, I've gone through all, I've checked all of them, I can return true. Okay? Probably could just come in two for loops, but I'm, I'm fuzzy right now. Okay? So if we wanted to try it, right, we could throw this in together. And so let's do that. So let's do our, so here's our grid vector of vector of int of the grid equals this one. And then what do we have here? I have. 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, and then we had 1, 7, 3, and then we had 2, 2, 5, 2, 2, and 5. And we want to see out does match the column sums of the grid. That should be, so 0 is false, 1 is true. So 1 is true. If you're just outputting trues or falses, you get zeros and ones. You could do an if if you wanted to. So, um, But now if I change it, right, if I change one of these values, it's not going to matter here, right, because I'm checking the row sum and the column sum. But if I change this one here, it probably will give me something different because now I have this row sum versus this column sum. 
right? Now I should get back zero. Okay, I got back zero. So I feel pretty confident that'll probably do what it's supposed to do. Make sense? Okay, so we'll have a question on recursion, we'll have a question on 2D arrays, and then the last one here is a question on classes and inheritance. Something really quick and easy with a really quick inheritance. Okay, so midterm, name and score. You get methods for both, construct them in the steps of both. Do not include the no argument constructor. Okay, so write a class for midterm. <coughs> class for midterm, uh, private string for name, int for score. And then the public section, the term, uh, string for name, and for score, this name is the name, this score is the score, and then get methods for both, right? Get methods for both. Okay, so string get name, returns name, and then int get score score and then write a class easy midterm that extends midterm override get score method so if we're going to override we probably want to mark this as virtual right not necessarily required but it, it's probably good if we're doing this here I wouldn't mark you down if you didn't here um, and then we want a class for easy midterm that extends midterm with the publics um, now really the only thing that's different here is get score just always returns 100. So if we're extending a class that has a constructor, we have to call the constructor, right? So we need an easy midterm constructor that takes a string for name and score. And we're going to pass those to our um, midterm name and score. I can never remember the syntax here. That, that looks right. I'd have to go look it up here, right? And there's nothing else that we do here. And then we're going to override uh, int get score. Uh, int get score override or something. Where do we put it here? Like a constant. Uh, there's definitely not a constant here. We're just going to return 100. I think, we, I think it goes on the end, right? So I can give it an actual score here, or if I make an easy midterm, it just always gives me 100. It doesn't matter what score you gave it initially, you'll just get 100 back, right? So we should try it, right? So we should make midterm, uh, I don't know, uh, hard midterm, given Eric, and we'll say like 75, and easy midterm, easy, given Eric and 75 again, you know, hard midterm, score, Hard get score and line. So we should do pointers for these, shouldn't we? Probably doesn't matter because we're not going to do the polymorphism thing. We could if we wanted, right? And then the easy midterm score for easy get score. So we should get 75 and 100. 75 and 100. Awesome. Okay. Make sense? Questions, thoughts, concerns? Here's midterm review. Again, please use Visual Studio. I had someone one time type right into Canvas their C++ code. I don't know why. Right? Like, use Visual Studio or Xcode or whatever you're using, and then just copy paste. Right? To give me your answer, do this thing. Right? Go find your class here. Right? Here's my two classes. And copy. Come over to Canvas and hit paste. Okay. Life will be so much easier. No, like the code should run, right? that, that sort of thing. Use your tools, please. Um, it is open book. It's open note, open internet. Um, English paper rules apply. And most of these questions are really small. So like if you ask for the answer from ChatGPT, there's not really any room for you to add original effort, right? Is that, is that pretty reasonable? Like, okay, how do I loop through and find the sum of a column in a 2D vector. I'd be okay with that piece if you're using that small little snippet, right? You can't just plug in the answer and give me that back, right? You have to have your own work here. So maybe, you know, a little bit of space there for a small bit here. But again, I I'm, would like to assume these are not hard. Do these feel hard? If they do, that's okay. Please tell me. Um, but I, I would imagine these don't feel too hard here. 
Um, this is just a quick little checkpoint for you here. Um, just make sure things are feeling pretty pretty okay. Right? If this feels hard, come talk to me. Okay? We, we got to get you set up with some more appointments and more tutoring and meeting me with, for office hours. So the goal of this is everyone gets it done. Um, there will be a 90 minute time limit on this once you hit start. So you don't have unlimited amount of time for these. That way everyone has the same 90 minutes. So whenever you hit start, just make sure you've got 90 minutes to work on it. Okay? Unlike the chapter quizzes that were just open all the time. All right? Um, that way if I wanted to sit and watch you take it, I could, but I don't want to. All right? Okay. Um, if you're taking it and a question doesn't make sense because I wrote it, please message me right away. Call me, text me, find me on Discord, whatever you want. Like, just get in touch with me as soon as you can. So at least I have a record that you asked. Depending on, most of you are not morning people, so we're, we're pretty good here, right? I will just not be around in the mornings because I hate mornings, um, but I'm up super late at night like a lot of you folks, so I'll probably catch your message. But if not, at least I've got a record that you asked it, and then we can go from there, okay? All right, awesome. So uh, I don't have anything new for lab then, so if you want to come to work on old lab stuff, great. We'll get a, that all knocked out and done. Next week, oh, we'll have a new lab because we'll be able to start new stuff in the morning, and then we'll have our usual afternoon lab next week, okay? I'll see you all next Tuesday. You Take care.